Hi. Before starting I would like to kindly ask you a courtesy. If you find the contents of the video interesting, subscribe to our channel and like it. It doesn't cost you anything, however it is very important for the channel to be considered by YouTube. Thank you very much if you support our work. Have you ever pondered the health implications of consuming fish? In the realms of health and nutrition, the question of fish consumption is a topic of ongoing debate. It's a culinary conundrum that has the scientific community split in two. On one side, there are those who champion the nutritional value of fish, highlighting the heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids and essential vitamins it contains. These proponents argue that these nutrients are essential for maintaining optimal health and well-being. But like two sides of the same coin, there's an opposing perspective. A faction of scientists and health experts challenge the purported benefits of fish consumption, questioning the strength of the evidence supporting these claims. They argue that the studies conducted so far do not conclusively demonstrate a clear health advantage associated with regular fish intake. This divergence of opinions isn't just limited to the scientific community, it trickles down to us, the consumers, leaving us in a quandary. Should we be regularly incorporating servings of salmon or tuna into our diets? Or should we err on the side of caution, mindful of the potential risks associated with fish consumption? So, what are these risks? Well, they range from concerns about mercury levels and saturated fats, to a perceived lack of tangible benefits. And then there's the question of sustainability, a concern that grows more pressing with each passing day. We must consider not just the impact of our dietary choices on our health, but also on the health of our planet. It's a lot to digest, isn't it? But don't worry, this is a complex issue, one that requires a nuanced understanding. It's not about categorically labeling fish as good or bad. Instead, it's about weighing the potential benefits against the potential risks, considering the type of fish, the manner in which it's sourced, and how frequently it's consumed. As we can see, the debate about the health benefits of fish consumption is far from settled. When it comes to health recommendations, there's a vast spectrum of viewpoints. That's particularly true when it comes to the topic of fish consumption. On one side of the spectrum, there are those who see fish as a superfood. These proponents point to the high levels of omega-3 fatty acids found in many species of fish. Omega-3s are essential nutrients, known for their potential cardiovascular benefits. Besides omega-3s, fish is also a rich source of essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D and iodine. These experts advocate for a regular dietary inclusion of fish, suggesting we should eat it two to three times weekly to reap these potential health advantages. But as with any debate, there's another side of the story. Skeptics question the touted benefits of fish, raising concerns about certain aspects that could potentially outweigh the positives. One of these concerns is mercury. Certain types of fish, particularly larger and longer-lived species, can accumulate high levels of this heavy metal, which can be harmful to humans if ingested in large amounts. Then there's the issue of saturated fats. While fish is generally considered a lean protein, some varieties can be high in saturated fats. And while the debate on saturated fats is a topic in itself, these skeptics argue that the potential negatives of these fats might offset the benefits of omega-3s. Lastly, these skeptics question the tangible benefits of fish consumption. They argue that existing studies don't conclusively support the claims that fish consumption can lead to better health outcomes. So where does this leave us? It's clear that there's no one-size-fits-all answer. The choice to include fish in our diets and how often depends on a variety of factors. These include our individual health goals, dietary preferences, and even ethical considerations. Clearly there's a lot to consider when deciding how often to include fish in our diet. But understanding the spectrum of viewpoints can help us make informed decisions that align with our health goals and values. As the saying goes, knowledge is power. Not all fish are created equal when it comes to your health. This is especially true when we start to look into specific types of fish that may present more harm than benefits. First off, we have swordfish. This majestic creature of the seas is unfortunately known for having high levels of mercury. Mercury, a toxic heavy metal, can have detrimental effects on our nervous system and is especially harmful to children and pregnant women. Next in line, canned tuna. Now tuna, when fresh, is an excellent source of lean protein and omega-3 fatty acids. But when it's canned, it comes with a side of high salt content and potential omega-3 loss. 
This can be problematic, particularly for those with high blood pressure or other heart conditions. Moving on, let's talk about farmed salmon. While salmon is often praised for its healthy fat content and heart-friendly benefits, farmed salmon tells a different story. The farming practices associated with this particular fish have been linked with a host of issues. These include the use of antibiotics, artificial coloring, and a high concentration of pollutants. Next, we have farmed sea bream. This fish is often farmed in crowded conditions, which can lead to disease and the overuse of antibiotics. This overuse can contribute to antibiotic resistance, a growing public health concern that affects us all. Lastly, we have farmed sea bass. This fish is not only farmed in similar conditions as sea bream, but it also has elevated phosphorus levels. While phosphorus is essential for our bodies, too much of it can lead to bone and heart problems, especially in individuals with kidney issues. These examples underline the importance of being informed about the type of fish we consume. It's not just about whether you're eating fish, but also about which fish you're eating. So the next time you're in the fish aisle or ordering off a seafood menu, remember that knowledge is power. And in this case, it could also be the key to healthier, more sustainable choices. Intensive fish farming practices are not without their share of criticism. Now let's delve into why that is. At first glance, intensive fish farming may seem like a solution to overfishing and dwindling wild fish populations. However, beneath the surface, a different story unfolds, one of environmental and health concerns that can't be ignored. Picture this. Thousands of fish are crammed into confined spaces, living in less than ideal conditions. This overcrowding can lead to the rapid spread of diseases, which are then combated with a cocktail of antibiotics and vaccines. While these medicines might help keep the fish alive and growing, they come with their own set of problems. For starters, the excessive use of antibiotics in aquaculture contributes to a global health issue, antibiotic resistance. This is when bacteria evolve to become resistant to the very drugs designed to kill them, making our arsenal of antibiotics less effective and potentially leading to untreatable infections. Furthermore, these antibiotics, vaccines and other additives don't just stay in the fish tanks. They seep into the surrounding environment, contaminating not only the water, but also the soil and plants. This ripple effect can cause harm to other species and disrupt delicate ecological balances. Then there's the issue of waste. With so many fish in one place, the amount of waste produced is staggering. This waste laden with uneaten food, feces and chemicals can pollute the water and create dead zones, areas where oxygen levels are so low that most marine life can't survive. And let's not forget the fish themselves. Farmed fish are often less nutritious than their wild counterparts, with lower levels of beneficial omega-3 fatty acids and higher levels of unhealthy fats. Plus, there's the risk of consuming residual antibiotics and other chemicals used in farming. This gives us a glimpse into the potential dark side of fish farming. The challenge now is to seek out alternatives that are both sustainable and health conscious, ensuring the future of fish as a viable food source without compromising our health or the health of our planet. So, what are some sustainable and healthier fish choices? Well, if you're looking for the most sustainable and health-friendly options, you might want to consider smaller wild-caught fish. Let's take sardines as a prime example. These little swimmers are packed with nutritional goodness and are a brilliant choice for those looking to make eco-friendly decisions. Sardines are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which are known to support heart health. They are also a great source of vitamin D, essential for bone health and immune function. In addition to these nutritional perks, sardines are low on the food chain, which means they have a smaller chance of accumulating harmful substances such as mercury, a common concern when it comes to larger fish species. But it's not just about the health benefits, is it? Sardines are also champions when it comes to sustainability. They reproduce quickly, and their populations can easily bounce back, making them a renewable resource. By choosing sardines, you're not only making a decision that's good for you, but also one that's good for the planet. And it's not just sardines. Other small wild-caught fish, like anchovies and mackerel, can also be excellent choices. They share many of the same health and environmental benefits as sardines, providing you with a variety of options to keep your meals exciting and your impact on the environment minimal. Remember, however, that while these options are generally more sustainable, it's important to consider the source of your seafood. Look for fish that is labeled as wild-caught and try to buy from trusted sources that prioritize sustainable fishing practices. 
As we navigate our way through the vast ocean of choices, let's strive to make decisions that not only benefit our health, but also respect and preserve the world's aquatic ecosystems. After all, a healthier planet means a healthier us. Choosing sustainable fish options can be a win-win situation for our health and the environment. The debate around fish consumption is complex, with valid points on both sides. The scientific community remains divided, with some singing praises of the cardiovascular benefits of omega-3 and essential vitamins, while others question the conclusiveness of these studies. Guidelines on fish intake also present a kaleidoscope of perspectives. Some health experts encourage regular fish intake for its potential health advantages, while skeptics highlight concerns about mercury levels, saturated fats, and a perceived lack of concrete benefits. We've shed light on certain fish types to avoid due to potential health risks, such as swordfish, canned tuna, farmed salmon, sea bream, and sea bass. On the other hand, we've also promoted sustainable choices, like smaller wild-caught fish, for their lower environmental impact and potential health benefits. Intensive fish farming practices have been critiqued for their environmental and health repercussions, emphasizing the importance of making informed choices. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Stay informed and make the decision that best aligns with your health goals and ethical beliefs.